You are listening to the Harmonia Podcast, the renaissance of Western spirituality, paganism and animism. We show the Dharmic path and common origin of Norse, Germanic, Vedic, Greco-Roman, Celtic, Balto-Slavic and Persian beliefs. We also draw parallels to the Proto-Indo-European worldview and the ancient beliefs we call the religion with no name. The Harmonia podcast weaves the threads together to understand where we come from and let our true nature empower us in everyday life. We don't have to turn to the East. The answers were always right here. We're all pagan by instinct. Welcome to the Harmingya podcast. All of you who truly want to deepen your Indo-European pagan spirituality should definitely listen carefully today. Because as you've seen in the title, it will be all about meditation, a very Indo-European thing to do. Meditation has always been a common practice throughout the Indo-European world and history. The Vedics did it, the Greeks did it, the Romans, the Persians, the Slavs did it. And I'm convinced that the Norse Utiseta and the Germanic mound sitting also came from meditation. And that Galdr originally was mantras. Not the least since Galdr etymologically means sing and that they were often composed in a specific meter. All Dharmic pagan peoples meditated, and so should you. In the Hamiya Discord server, meditation has been brought up lately, so here I'll give a short historical context and then teach Vedic meditation. I make this episode for three reasons. First of all, because I know it's going to deepen your spirituality. Everybody who wants to understand Dharmic paganism and the divine nature must first understand one's own spirit and its connection to everything around you. You have to hear your own voice in the choir of the great song. Secondly, because it's going to make sure you can act with arete, excellence, in every field of your life. Every improvement starts with self-awareness. The Vedics, Greeks and Romans even taught their warriors meditation, even at the academies, so that they could grow their skills. And thirdly, because I want to show that this is a truly Indo-European phenomenon. Never believe when they tell you that meditation is something they do in the East, The practice of self-realization and meditation is as old as we are. It's our own tradition. The ancient Greek word for meditation was melete. Melete was originally the name of one of the muses, of course the muse of thought and meditation. Her name means contemplation. For the Greeks, meditation was the practical dimension of the Delphic maxim, Know Thyself, found in the Temple of Apollo. By knowing our true self, Atman, we can also know the divine cosmos, Brahman. Their technique aimed at awakening the spiritual memory and achieving the dominance of the conscious mind over the unconscious. The term self-realization that you've often heard me mentioning in uh, previous episodes is nothing else than this total insight that your Atman is of the divine itself that you are connected to everything and everybody via the Khartus, and that you are anchored to the Absolute. The effort to achieve this enlightenment, this insight, this henosis, the Greek word for oneness, 
was called Evdaimonia. This is because the Greeks called Atman your daimon, mentioned in the episode on the parts of the self. Evdaimonia is an intense state of bliss, a central theme of the philosophy of Aristotle. It means that to be close to the divine, you have to act with arete, to always strive to grow emotionally, physically, intellectually and spiritually. There are thousands of sources of meditation throughout the Indo-European world and that it was used to improve every aspect of life. Just ask Empedocles, Plotinus, Marcus Aurelius, or even the Persian Zorkane warriors. And to strive to grow emotionally, physically, intellectually and spiritually is where meditation or melete comes in. To stabilize the mind and realize the three main parts of oneself and to discern what we need to focus on from what we need to let go of. To meditate is to consciously erase everything but Atman, to be solely consciousness. The Vedics said that when you're only Atman, you're at the very feet of Brahman. To meditate is to push everything but Atman away and to realize that in there, there's nothing. There's only the connection between you and cosmos. There's no wind. There's nirvana. I mentioned in an earlier episode that when you reach the highest point of Yggdrasil, there's a hawk or a falcon whose name means the abating wind. And this is what that is. Buddha, and remember that he was a Vedic guru, there was no Buddhism at that time. He was once asked by a woman, I want happiness. And he then answered, first remove I, that's ego, and then remove want, because that's desire, and now you're left with only happiness. Most people let their thoughts, actions and lives be mastered and run only by the lowest aspect of existence, the ego race and consumption society where insecurities and expectations, demands and other people's opinions run the show. This will, of course, form their shape, hammer, their thoughts, hugr, and memories, mini. If we go up one level of the self, to the part that's about klevos, the beautiful, honourable and generous things that brings you harmingya, there won't be much of that at all if you're only influenced by the material ego world. If you instead let your mind wander to a place where you're only your true self, only the divine part of you, you will be equal to the divine. And it will inspire and colour your actions and thoughts, and you'll be less anxious and insecure. So be revolutionary and go to a place where Instagram likes or the dragon's pile of gold doesn't influence your life. Go to a place where there's only you and where you see noble values. That will make your day much lighter and your life more purposeful. It's not until you've dared to meet yourself that you can begin the hero's journey is not until you've realized your Atman, your true self and its divine nature that you can look away from pettiness and ego and start building true Hamingya. It's not until you realize your connection to the divine that you can start acting like the divine. 
Meditation can mean almost anything today, and there are thousands of meditation techniques. Meditation is often split up into three main categories. Contemplative meditation, concentration meditation, and then the meditation where you just let go and empty your mind of anything that's not your true Atman. Some meditation techniques suit some people better, and we can definitely go through several of them. I can even make podcast specials on Utiseta, for example. But today we'll look at the original Vedic meditation. According to me, that's the best place to start. I actually know several people who use Vedic meditation to first get to the state of full consciousness to then create magic from there. But that's another story. This is about laying the foundation for a deeper spirituality and to start understanding yourself better. Sometimes I hear people who've tried meditation and they say, but nothing happened. I didn't get the answers. I didn't get the results. And that's because they're still very focused on the lowest part of existence and they are not patient enough. They want the answers and results to come in that very meditation session. They expect too much. My experience is that the insights and results actually come afterwards, when you least expect it. And again, let's not be too result-oriented. After all, the whole point of this is not to focus on the ego the chase and the material aspect, but the very opposite. Vedic meditation falls under the last of the three main categories, where you let go and empty your mind of anything that's not your true Atman. Although people have meditated as long as we've been human, Vedic meditation must be seen as the original, or at least the original that's been recorded. It's mentioned already in the Rig Veda, which some people say is even 10,000 years old. And Vedic meditation is not breath-centered, and it's neither strict nor a demanding technique. It's rather a sound-based technique. Sound, not breath, is the first thing you experience in the womb. And one could draw a parallel between the child in the womb to the Atman in the Brahman. Both connected to the Supreme Being. The first one hears the mother's voice while also connected to her via the umbilical cord. And your true self is connected to the Divine through the Filgya. And you hear the great song wherever you go. Originally, each student got an individual mantra to use from their guru. But for the sake of simplicity, we'll start with the mantra Aum. I recommend that before you start meditating, you listen to the Aum chant a few times in the YouTube link that you'll find in the description. That's the sound I want you to visualize later on. Aum is the primordial sound. It is the frequency of the divine cosmos. Aum is what has been, what is and what shall be, just like the three norns. Aum are in fact the th- only three letters you can pronounce without moving your tongue. A-U-M. The A stands for the scream the child gives off at birth, just like Rudra takes his first roaring breath when he first manifests. It is the beginning. U stands for the maintenance and upholding of the universe, just like Vishnu. And M is the sound you make with your mouth closed. It is the end, the closing. But in fact, there is no end, just like Ragnarök or even in Harry Potter, where it says, I open at the close on the snitch. 
the closing and destruction is always followed by another beginning, another A. So if you've listened to the Aum chant a few times and you feel ready, here's the technique. Find a calm and quiet spot where you won't be disturbed. Sit comfortably. Vedic meditation is not about strict rules. Just sit so you feel relaxed and comfortable. Even though it's always good to still keep a respectful posture. Breathe in and out slowly a couple of times. Relax. Let go of everything that's been going on today. Let the mind settle down. Imagine how more and more things go away in your mind. How it all declutters. Sit there for a while and just let everything go. A lot of thoughts and images will of course show up. And that's because your mind is too busy. Let them go. When they show up, just try to acknowledge them. But don't try to erase them forcedly or push them away. You want to avoid effort. Acknowledge them and then let them go. When you feel calm, start mentally chanting Aum, just like you heard it in the video. You don't chant it out loud, you don't focus on it, you just hear it continuously in your mind. Keep repeating the sound mentally. Keep repeating it mentally. It might change in length or pitch. That's fine. Just let it come as it comes. If something comes to your mind, images or thoughts, don't resist them. Just look at it, acknowledge it, and then gently push it to the side and guide your mind back to the mantra. Think of your thoughts as passing clouds on the sky. You see them, but they pass away over the sky. If you're interrupted or new images and thoughts come to your mind, just go back to the mantra. Keep the mantra going in your head. Let it be the only thing in your mind. Notice that as time passes, the inner chant is getting more and more silent. Eventually, it's completely silent. Your mind has stepped beyond sound and existence. You transcend it. Stay in that silence. For beginners, this might only last for a few seconds. It's a matter of practice. It's something that will improve. But as soon as you feel that you slip out of that silence and emptiness, you go back to the chant. That silence you come to is you, the true you. And the silence is the divine. This is the only thing that's true about yourself and the only thing that's true about eternal divinity. This is eternity. This is the immortal soul. There's nothing 
but full consciousness and mindfulness. This, my friend, is what the divine is. Stay in that silence. And as soon as you slip out, you start chanting Aum mentally until it quiets down. I challenge you to be a real Indo-European. I challenge you to meditate 15 to 20 minutes every day for a month. Not only will you have extended your periods of silence and consciousness, you will also feel more energized and revitalized. You will start feeling that you can get closer to the gods you want to connect to. And you will have started to make smarter and more mindful decisions because you've started to realize that you're immensely much more than just that beautiful little body sitting there in the sofa. Contact me and tell me how it went. And as always, the divine in me bows to the divine in you. I want to thank you for listening. Make sure to subscribe so you increase your Hamingya straight away. You will find more information about the podcast and the foundation on harmingya.foundation. You will also find us on Instagram, Discord and YouTube and more platforms will follow. Feel free to contact us if you have questions, requests or need guidance. I hope to hear from you soon and that you will tune in next time. And until then, seek not the religion of your ancestors, seek what your ancestors sought.